Remember the name of Jonathan Tippett, built Prosthesis, which is the world's first and largest purpose-built off-road exoskeleton racing mech, which was designed and made to pioneer an entirely new sport of mech racing. Hey folks, Jonathan Tippett here. I'm the co-founder and chief test pilot at Furion Exobionics. We're an R&D initiative aimed at developing large-scale all-terrain exoskeletons, specifically for the purpose of competitive sport. Our flagship prototype, Prosthesis the Anti-Robot, rolled out of the lab about three years ago, but at that point, it could barely even move. Since then, we've made major strides. We're pushing and pulling heavy objects, climbing over obstacles, and covering some pretty serious ground. Now, to be clear, this is not a robot. It's not controlled by a computer or some kind of remote control or joystick system. It is completely controlled by a single person sitting inside the cockpit, controlling it with his own arms and legs. Kind of like how Ripley was controlling the exoskeleton power loader to fight the alien queen from the movie Aliens. When the pilot moves his arms and legs, each of the movements will be transmitted, then amplified by the four giant legs. So good physical health and stamina will be absolutely essential to control the robot. The prosthesis exoskeleton weighs just over four tons, is four meters high and five meters wide, can reach speeds up to 30 kilometers per hour, is powered by a lithium ion battery and can operate up to an hour on a single charge. Now the main question I asked about the exoskeleton was why build it so large when everyone else is developing a small body-hugging exoskeleton. Jonathan said, the primary purpose for prosthesis has always been for sport. Ultimately, the size was an outcome of the design process, not a goal. You start with a full-size adult, wrap an exoskeletal control frame around them, encircle them with a protective roll cage, with space for pilot suspension, add room for batteries, motors and hydraulics, with a generous allowance for access, given that this was a prototype, and that pretty much establishes the body size. The legs were sized to be proportional to the body. They produced a stride that would allow a reasonable running speed, while ensuring sufficient suspension travel to ensure all-terrain capabilities. And the next thing you know, you've captured the Guinness World Record title for the world's largest four-legged exoskeleton. Jonathan came up with the idea and started drawing designs of the mech in 2006, then spent the next five years evolving the concept, and five more years building a prototype. Then in 2016, he joined forces with the company Furion to form Furion Exobionics, which gave him the resources to build the prosthesis exoskeleton. It took about nine months to build the current prototype and has undergone extensive changes during three years of field trials. Jonathan believes the next version of the mech will be capable of attaining performance levels worthy of a racing competition. Even though it was built with the end goal of starting a mech racing league, Jonathan said he has used it in so many ways he never intended. So let's climb up into the cockpit and we'll show you how the pilot connects to the interface. It's a bit of a tight squeeze getting in, but once you're in, it's actually quite comfortable. You're locked in by your hands, your elbows, your knees, and your feet. The pilot's arms control the outside legs of the machine. The interface picks up the pilot's movements and amplifies the force by about 50 times, letting them throw the thousand pound steel legs around like they barely even weigh 20 pounds but still preserving the sense of momentum that they have. The inside legs of the machine are controlled by the legs of the pilot. All four legs on the machine are identical and they're on a common axis. So the machine doesn't really have front legs or back legs, it just has inside legs or outside legs. 
So once you're connected in all these places, all you gotta do is stand up. So you may be wondering what kind of training and practice it takes to get from standing up to flipping cars. Well, it's quite a bit. I did ask Jonathan, how much money has he spent on getting the prototype to this point? He said, it's hard to put a price tag on the development cost and the amount of countless hours that went into it over its 14 year history. I like to say, it cost me 14 years of my life, but really, it made those 14 years more valuable than any other project could have, as it's a labor of love. But to give you an idea, Jonathan said the first machines we sell will be pricey in the two to four million dollar range. But like with any new technology, as the technology advances and volumes increase, the price could come down as much as 10 times or more. Now obviously, these mechs are not for the general public at this stage. They would be made for racing teams. Jonathan says, however, I do envision a future with consumer level recreation mech suits. But as they say in the giant mech business, one step at a time. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.